What's with the back and forth with Omoyele Shawari's detention? The DSS says no one has come forward, but his lawyer is saying that it's false. What really is going on? And are Nigerian state still viable or bleeding with the rising wage bills and dwindling revenues? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. Well, Femi Falana, the lawyer representing the detained publisher of Sahara Reporters on Moyele Shouri, has described as misleading the claims by the State Security Service that it failed to release the activist because no one had come to collect him. Now, on Friday night, in an obvious attempt to defend its repeated refusal to release him 48 hours after meeting his bail conditions, the DSS claimed that no one had turned up to take delivery of the publisher and rights activist after the federal agency confirmed receipt of Omoyele Shouri's release warrant. So what exactly is going on? And joining me in the studio uh, is uh, the executive director of Serap Ade Tokumbo Mumuni. It's good to have you join us, sir. It's a pleasure being here. Yes. I know that Serap has so many issues it's pursuing the federal government in court for, but let us talk about Omoyele Shouri versus the DSS. And my question still stands. What exactly do you think as a a legal practitioner and someone who goes to court every other day. Do our court um, judgments or whatever the court says, does it no longer hold water in today's Nigeria? <coughs> Thank you very much for having me. I think the DSS is just trying to play games. A court granted bail, imposed conditions. Once the conditions are met, the judge or the magistrate will issue a reproduction warrant, a release warrant for the accused person. And the DSS has, of course, said that they have received that warrant. So, which, so what exactly is the problem? So I, I don't think there is any problem except that the DSS are just trying to play games with the order of the court. Once a release warrant is signed by a judge who gave the bail, they say the DSS is bound to release the accused person because this, the, 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 whether the bail condition is met or not belongs to the judge. Once the judge sees that the, the condition that he has given has been met, then the, the accused person is bound to be released. So what I see the DSS doing is it's like they are trying to play games with the order of the court. And that is so unfortunate in Nigeria when a judge makes an order and the, the, the person against whom the order is made is trying to play games, not trying to obey the order. In a civilized world or in a place where things are working, in I'm sena, In a sane environment, that's what I call it. Yes, in a place where things are working, the court, whatever the court orders has to be met. You have to comply. Exactly. And I'm wondering, if we're not complying, are there no consequences? I think, I think the consequences should be what the concept to follow should be what the lawyers to show or they should pursue. Mm -hmm. An order of court properly made that's not complied with is a ground for proceeding in contempt against those whom the order has been made that are not complying. I think Fem Falano is a competent lawyer. I respect him so much. He should now look at the possibility of proceeding against the DSS in content. Which he has said, and we'll come back to that. Yes. Now, we're going to be talking with um, uh, uh, another lawyer on the phone. His name is Ini Begefeng. He's one of the lawyers who uh, uh, work with uh, Omoyele Shouri. Uh, Barista Ini Bege, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, please. Great, perfect. It's good to have you join us on the show. So tell us exactly where where you stand on the situation between the DSS and the release of Omoyele Shawari from their custody. The position is that Mr. Shawari and Bakare were granted bail on very stringent conditions, which we were able to fulfill as at the 6th of November. That was last Wednesday. On the same day, we made efforts to serve them with the order of the court. They declined.
to accept the order on the basis that at that time they had closed for the day. The following day, which was the 7th, we went back and set them at about 10 a.m. From Thursday to Friday, when they were served with the order, the state security service has refused to comply with the order of the court. So that is the position. Who had showed up to pick him up? Because I'm still trying to understand why someone who every, has so many lawyers and has so many people working with him would not have someone to show up for his release from the DSS. Is there any truth, iota of truth, in what the DSS is claiming? That statement is just pure nonsense. What do they mean by nobody showing up to pick him? Are there commodities for people to claim? The order of the court did not say they should be released to someone. The order said they should be released. But looking at it on the substance, I have just confirmed to you that I was there at their office. Personally, I met with their lawyers, I met with Shawari, and they clearly refused to release him. So this argument that nobody showed up to release him, as far as we are concerned, is just nonsense. What has happened is that the state security service has become a law unto itself, has flouted the subsisting order of the court of competent jurisdiction. And we are going to fight them to, the, to it. I mean, you, you literally took that question out of my mouth. I was asking, what is going to be your next line of action? Because, like you have said, if the DSS, according to you, is becoming a, a law unto itself, then we have a problem here, don't we? Because today is a Moyele Shawari, tomorrow it might be me. Absolutely. Which is why this level of contempt for the rule of law, why this level of degradation, of our democratic principles and constitutional democracy should not be tolerated. We will be going to court to initiate contempt proceedings against the DG of the SSS to have him remanded in prison until he is ready to comply with the order of the court. We will not just sit by and allow this reign of tyranny to continue. But I want you to know clearly that what they are telling Nigerians by this flagrant refusal to obey the order of the court is that they have absolutely no case against Omo Yele Shawari. Because if you have a case against him and you claim you have filed charges, so-called charges, and the same court that you have arraigned him, granted him bail on suffocating terms, which he was able to perfect, the two of them, on what basis are you still holding him? So this is not really a case of persecution by the federal government. This is clear persecution. This is political vendetta. A satanic attempt to silence voices of dissent in this country. And what I am confessing to you is that we are going to fight them with all instruments that is available to us under the law. All right, Barista Nibere, if you thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, back to you, um, Pastor Mumuni. It, it, I mean, he called it satanic. I'm trying to understand what, what that means. But you're t we were talking about Falana here as the representative of um, Amor Lishuri. We all know who a Falana is. But Inibere is saying they would fight with every instrument under the law. But what message is this passing to us as Nigerians? We have seen several court orders flouted fragrant, uh, fragrantly. Uh, and I'm just wondering to myself, what message is this administration passing to us Nigerians? If there be anything that is uh, a security breach or a security concern, should it not be made public instead of putting us all in limbo? You see, <coughs> The most fundamental thing in any land where we say we operate democracy and we want peace and tranquility to reign is first of all to comply with the process of law. And the very fundamental aspect of the process of law is that if a court speaks, a court speaks with authority, it is for whoever that order is passed on to, to act in compliance with that order. 
the courts exist for all of us. Mm -hmm. We cannot be talking about that we want peace and security without obeying the due process of law. And due process of law means once somebody is charged to court, let the prosecution take its due course. Once a court makes an order, let the pronouncement of that court be taken as sacrosanct and abiding. I'm going to ask a stupid question, and I'm saying stupid because it might be stupid. Yes, we know the courts have the final say, especially when it comes to the law. But could the federal government or the DSS on its own feel that the court is not being right because of something they know, hence the reason why they're still holding this man. And, and this is detail for several other court orders that have been flouted by this administration. Could it be that they feel they know better or there's something that they know that the courts are yet to understand? You see... It's a stupid question, no, remember? No, 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 no. You see, when a government takes... Let me take the president, for instance. The oath of office of the president is not a reliance on what the president knows or his agent knows. The oath of office is to do justice according to law, to all manners of people without affection, ill will. But I, I would remind you, sometime last year at the NBA conference, yes. your annual general meeting, um, the president was there. And he did say something about the fact that um, national security supersedes the rule of law. And you all sat there. Nobody actually discredited that. But that we see that playing out now. Should the NBA or any lawyer in this country have the temerity to speak up against these kind of issues when you all sat there when the no, president no, no, said no, it? No, no, no. You see, I don't know what the lawyers were doing. But you are a lawyer. No, I was and the not MBA a, is no, an umbrella body, no, no, which, no, no, no. In, in, other, in, in other words, whatever no. they say is okay means no, that no. you also no, 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 are no. saying it's okay. No. As a matter of fact, so soon after that statement was made, the directing mind and bodies of the MBA should speak out immediately. Did they? No, no, no. You see, I don't know what the functions of lawyers are now because... When Can I say that you're incriminating yourself when you say no, no, because no, no, you no. are a lawyer and no, you, you say see, you don't know what see, the functions see, of lawyers you are? See, you see, when lawyers speak, they must speak as the conscience of the nation. It is not for anybody to make any statement. They should have reminded the president immediately that substituting his own notion of what security means Substituting his own his, his agent's notion of what security means with what the law thinks is appropriate, we will be replacing the rule of law by the rule of men. Is that not what's happening right now? Because if national security, in the words of Mr. President, supersedes the rule of law, and several steps are being taken in the best interest of the people, which is national security, then of course the rule of law is set aside. No, 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 that is not what should be but in a But there democracy. are cases in the court that have been, one way or the other, not adhered to. What do you call that? You see, the reason why this perfidy will continue, the reason why these shenanigans will continue, is for the Nigerian people not to demand. You see, in 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 in, in Sena environment, people will have gone to the street to protest. And I believe that it is in the protest of the people that this government will know that Nigerians will not leave this nation to those who rule us alone. Nigerians will, will be ready to contest the space with this government so that what we know at rule of law should prevail in Nigeria. The rule of law is the rule of law over men, not the rule of men over law. That is very, very important. How do we get back to where or when the rule of law had any power whatsoever, when the full weight of the law did carry weight? Are we ever going to get there under this administration? No, 
we will get there under, under the administration because this is supposed to be a democratic administration. You said suppose, so it is not. It is. It is because we are operating the democracy. We are supposed to be operating under the rule of law, even when it was military regime. I remember the Supreme Court was categorical in the, in the case of Oju versus Governor of Lagos State, when the Lagos State was trying to ride rough short uh -huh. over the rule of law. The court put the the, the the government in its proper place. And that was even the military regime. 1986 was a military regime, the Bangladesh regime. We are used to courageous judges. We were used to judges who would act according to what the law demands and they will be ready to stand by it. I remember there was this GAAT Chinodu in 1984. He made a pronouncement and never, it was this same President Biden that was the head of state then. He never aligned with what the regime wanted. And the judge said, I have taken the oath of office to do justice according to law, and I'm ready to stand by it. And they did some things, and they just simply got him to retire. Those are the days when we believe that judges are alive to the uh, out of office. So does this mean that we, don't, we cannot find these judges anymore, or these kind of judges anymore in Nigeria? Are you saying we're bereft of those kind of judges? No, no, there are still judges who, be, who are ready to do... Where are they? No, for example, I know of judges of integrity. I can't be mentioning names. Oh, of course now. not. I know judges who will speak the truth to power at any point in time in the performance of the judicial functions. Those are the kind of judges we need, not timid judges, not judges who will be appointed based on some other consideration apart from their integrity and knowledge of the law. I'll come back and ask you what you think the average Nigerian, what role we should play in getting back to that place. But earlier on today uh, in the news, I spoke to um, a political analyst, and this is what he had to say. They will tell you for security reason. What else do you want? What kind of security reasons? His, will, nobody is asking. He's not leading Boko Haram, is he? Yeah. Or has he started a militant camp or group that we that, don't know? That we don't know. We don't know what the security know that we don't know. Because it's, I, ca I can't imagine that we've gotten to a point where the, 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 the judiciary is the last man hope. Is it? And if we have gotten to a point where there's a judgment of release of someone whom we felt is talking about things that is um, well known and is not getting his right in the court, then something is wrong with everyone. Do you think the judiciary, so has, I want to do you think the judiciary has lost its power of sorts when it comes to the rule of We are living in a confused society now. I need to take, yeah, because now you don't know who is free. Because if somebody who feels that he's walking the street of Nigeria and is making a noise without ammunition can be arrested, detained, and the court asks those who detain him to release him and it's not being released, then what do you say? That innocent man who felt like we just come up with a plan card tomorrow and say things will be threatened. That the Yoruba man will say is that I want to need for to lay corner. Those who belong, if they could be suffering, if they, if they could be going through this suffering, where am I there? What do you think has led to this um, act by the government and agencies of government? Who rudely I think the word, the word, the word revolution, that hashtag revolution, is a language that scholars have not been able to give us the understanding thereof. Because when you talk of revolution in the street of Nigeria in those days, like burn it down, let's chase this people off. You understand it? Unknown that the dictionary meaning coin another word that is a change of event, which never needs harm. Okay, so when our word comes to us 
in, in, the, in the actual sense of a political struggle, revolution, it means these guys are out to something. You understand it? We are not seeing it in another language or seeing. So you're telling me that a dictionary. word, just a word, is enough to put a man behind sure, bars. Sure. In Lagos, in Lagos. Without any fact or yeah. traces of. In my, look, we have a character here in Lagos. Once you hear, thank God for civilization and everybody is trying to do a new both style now. In our own African way of doing things, you shout only. In those days, you are burnt down immediately. Call it anything. Is a keiko, is uh, uncivilized, use any grammar, that is your own. But here in Africa, once you just shout uh, Africa, you know, when we talk of Africa, we are talking of not the South Africa that doesn't know what they are doing. You know. When we talk of uh, uh, Africa, we are talking of Lagos, where practicality is being done. You fumble, this is where we say shine your eye. If you don't shine your eye, you can see anything, and that's it. And when you say only here in Lagos, especially in the Odo Shudi, Ayemio. If you hear only in the old should be, you don't need to be taken to any judge. Judges so are, are you there. trying to justify, because I'm trying to understand this, are you trying to justify what the federal government has done? To well, that's why right. I don't know federal government. Too. Everybody's even looking for federal government. Obama said you left federal government. He's still looking for federal government. You understand? Everybody, nobody knows federal government. The federal government has become a spirit. If I, our president leaves office by 2023, God willing, he too he will be looking for federal government. That's easy, Jonathan. Go visit uh, Buhari looking for federal government. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that was an interesting conversation. But coming back to you on a serious note, what role do we play? Because when things like this happened, uh, happens, it looks like our hands are tied because even the court that, we're, that is supposed to be the hope of the common person or the common man is also somewhat stifled or ignored. He leaves us wondering if we all are safe and who would fight for us. Because that's, it's now a case of it could be me, it could be you, us versus them. How do, what role do we play in changing the course of things as it is right now? <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> I believe that Nigerians, we are never used to prolong struggles. That is what I have seen. For example, even if a national protest is called, I've never seen it lasted for more than one week. That I have come to note, note and identify. So we lack the staying power, is that what yes, you say? Yes, yes. We are not used to prolonged struggle. And that is why those who rule us take us for granted. That is why they would like to ride roughshod over us. If we engage in persistent, consistent, and insistent struggle, I think things will be better. But it was the start of a struggle of some, of some nature that led to Moyele being detained forever. No, 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 no. So, I mean, the average person out there is saying, I'm not going anywhere because I don't want to be in detention. I want to be able to take care of my kids. You know how the average no. Nigerian thinks. So, uh, let me if you're asking us to go on for a prolonged struggle or stay the course and protest and ask government, when was the last time our governments paid attention to any protest? But people engage in prolonged struggle outside Nigeria and eventually get what they what they want. So when we say we are a part of the civilized world, a part of the conscious world, consciousness, civilized civility also should also dictates that we should be ready to go the same whole hog that people outside Nigeria go through. Arab Spring happened in the Arab world. At the risk of being shot at, at the risk of being arrested and oh, no, no, you see, you see, you see, you see. How many Nigerians want to do that quickly? Good. We have no time. Good. Those who do it, you, you see, you have to give something for something. You cannot say you don't want to be shot at and continue to live in docility. I'm sure Nigerians are watching you. I'm wondering what would be going through their minds. But um, 
Mr. Mumuni is not going anywhere. He's still going to be here in the studio. But we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the economic viability of states within the country and the rising wage bills. You want to hear this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 